First of all, welcome. I'm very happy to see you here in Bucharest. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to open our discussion by addressing this simple question. <laughs> what is your evaluation of this uh, experts for uh, security and global affairs uh, event and uh, of uh, such uh, kind of contacts between academia and civil society? Well, I found my experience here very pleasing and very rewarding because, uh, first of all, it was an audience that was clearly interested in the topic. It was an audience that was well prepared. It was an audience that did not, and that is important for uh, in, in such events, did not come just to ask you know, a question to confirm you know, a certain bias or a certain idea uh, or to clarify something. Uh, it was very clear, it was people who tried to think as they spoke and try to develop if you wish, policy scenarios even, uh, which is always most important to discuss. And I found it very rewarding because people were trying to really map out what the future holds for Russia politically and in terms of foreign policy. So uh, my experience is extremely positive. Um, having in mind that you are a media personality and also taking into consideration that in germ journalism, um, as a mission, we have to present data uh, and information and not opinion. If you would uh, make some recommendation for a young journalist in Russia, what would that be? Well, I think that today, uh, on the one hand, the rules of journalism did not change. You really have to verify your facts, you really have to uh, quote people correctly. Um, if you're in news reports, you have to avoid uh, bias in, in your reporting, if you're an opinion journalist or investigator, that's a different thing. But what I think is uh, an interesting thing that needs to be taken into account is when you work on a story, when you work on a problem, how can you use, for example, social networks and other new media? Everyone is saying it's the way of the future, everyone is saying we have to use it, but I think that there are so many stories that out there, so much information that you drown in it. So what I think will be my advice in terms of uh, developing your journalism is go for social networks, but apply classic reporter uh, attitudes, instincts, to what you find in social networks and on the web. I think that this is, this is an important thing. And I think that sometimes you can find a story on a social network and find out it's false. Sometimes you can find a very small story, which, if you check it out right, will turn out to be very big. So any specifics for Russian, um, Russian Federation? Um? Well, I think that in the Russian Federation, <laughs> what we'll have unfortunately probably see quite soon is uh, more restrictions on on the internet uh, in the uh, wake of the protests, March protests in, in, in Russia that may be very well what the government is going to do. But I think that there are definitely, first of all, several sources you can trust in Russia and uh, that is Vedomisty newspaper, uh, Nova Gazeta weekly, uh, I'd still say quite significantly Commerzant because it mm -hmm. has quite a lot of exclusives. Um, RBK, RBC, of course Dost, my own channel. But I think that the number of uh, Russian publications that do verify facts, that do fact check, mm -hmm. that um, separate news from sort of opinion writing, uh, it's not really big. And um, these are probably the ones that I would recommend uh, f for that. Plus, by the way, very, if you're a researcher, for example, or a journalist researching, I would recommend that you from time to time watch state television or read Rossiyska Gazeta, the main gov government newspaper, yeah. because that gives you a different view, a different perspective on what happens in Russia. Okay. Do you believe that, that Russia could be lead or uh, govern in a democratic way? Yes, I do. I think that uh, Russia was already gone much more democratically than the Soviet Union in the 1990s and although it was a difficult and controversial period in Russian history but there were definitely big advantages there and one of them being a lively public debate and a much more competitive politics. It was not an ideal democracy, it was not a Swedish democracy uh, or American democracy but it was 
a vibrant society that was interested in democracy, and that is what's important. And um, I think that eventually Russia will enter, and I think historically speaking, quite soon, uh, probably tomorrow, you know, the age when democracy, opinion exchange, thrashing it out in the open, will once again uh, become important from the society and, uh, and, and to some extent, I would even say fashionable. Could this uh, be realized without the Western support? Um, I think that in the end, uh, although we've seen the West uh, investing heavily in like the BBC Russian service or say Deutsche Welle, mm -hmm. uh, for which I write a column, and which I find quite an interesting project, which really developed from very staid and um, stagnating sort of uh, old style uh, type of journalism um, into something very vibrant. Uh, but of course, Russia in this respect is pretty much as uh, any other country, people pay more attention to local media, so it has mm -hmm. to, uh, local offer has to be developed uh, in this respect. Um, and uh, I suppose that uh, very frequently it complements, uh, you know, the vision of at least the top uh, media organizations that mm -hmm. have Russian sections like the BBC or Deutsche Welle. Uh, I think Russians have, unfortunately, not a very clear idea of the outside world. And this is probably where such media outlets could uh, uh, come in very handy because uh, Russians do not travel abroad that much, and yeah. for them, for many of, 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 uh, Russian, of the Russian people, uh, there is not a lot of direct experience, especially of the West and of other countries generally. And uh, in this respect, it's, uh, I think, very important to show the people that people there are not the different from you, yeah. They are, moreover, they organize their lives sometimes better. I think that Russians are interested in this type of stories how to. Mm -hmm. How do you find a kindergarten yeah. for your uh, a child in Germany? How do you get a stipend in Italy? So different social... Yeah, aspects. how do you start a business in Boston? Uh, these mm -hmm. kind of things that people can apply to themselves. I think that that is important now in journalism. And uh, uh, if it's also given with a human angle, if it's given as a story of, say, overcoming sometimes unbelievable odds, then it's even more, it's even better. But what do Russians expect from a leader? And what do Russians expect from Russia? What do you think? <laughs> I think that Russians are now gradually starting to find their voice. Because uh, for 25 plus years, Russians either lived in a situation in which everything was falling apart and they had to find a new way new position, new attitudes in life, and that was the essence of the 1990s. And then the last 15, 17 years were the years of this creeping revanchism that, that permeated public life, in which, in which the government stimulated very much by mm, controlling uh, mm -hmm. the message from the state media, which is very powerful in Russia. And so what Russians wanted, they wanted again to be feared, to be again like the Soviet Union, to have this respect which is very difficult to, uh, to, to describe even what kind of respect is that. I think that this, although this is still a powerful feeling, but I suppose that new meanings are coming into life. I think that the Russian people want their leaders to be now at least. They want them to be just and to essentially, um, you know, practice what they preach. That is important. In this respect, for example, Mr. Putin until now is seen as someone who is, uh, you know, dedicating all, all his life to Russia, yeah. personally clean, and so on and so forth. With the uh, passage of time, this image may be dented. But I think that you do not start a conversation with a Russian person by saying, do you want democracy? Because democracy, for reasons which are very tragic, has become a bit of an uh, untouchable word, if you wish, in Russia. But if you ask Russians practical questions, do you want 
your members of parliament to be responsible to you, to, accountable to you? Yes. Do you think that media debate is good? Yes. Do you think we need to have good relations with the outside world? Yes. I think that once you deconstruct it, a lot of things that Russia won't correspond to a normal European country. I think that this is, this is to be understood. I think that the coming years and probably decades in Russia will be the time when more and more people will learn to become responsible in their private lives, not to count on someone else or the state or you know, the boss at work to fix their problems. So they will become, I hope, more responsible, more independent-minded. Okay. And this will, by the way, paradoxically, create more of a community of people. Because now Russia is a very fragmented society which gropes in the dark a little bit, trying to find uh, support societies trying to live in trust because Russian in Russian people unfortunately after these years I mean they feel a lot of mistrust towards each other I think that finding this trust and finding dignity and responsibility will be uh, a very important thing for many people and I, Russians are no worse than others I think they'll succeed so I do believe in Russian democracy it's not, it will not be easy to attain, but I do believe that, in this respect, my people is no different from others. Uh, let's go back to foreign policy a little bit, and I would like to discuss about the triangle Turkey, Russia and Iran. There was a recent visit of the president of Iran in uh, Moscow. Having also in mind your experience in the energy field, I would like to listen some opinions on future development. Well, first of all, with regard to Russia, Turkey, and Iran. I think, for politically speaking, it's in the lines of convenience. Uh, its members have, for now, coinciding interests in Syria, but these interests may well stop to coincide eventually, because, even over Syria, because the situation could change. Uh, and I think that uh, the alliance with Iran has been long standing since mid 90s, uh, and it's very largely based on uh, irritation with the United States. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is, I think, is at the core of this uh, Russian-Iranian alliance, that is to keep the United States at bay. Um, Turkey is different uh, in this uh, circumstance. Turkey is a member of NATO, and there, I think quite a lot of this alliance is actually more of an Erdogan-Putin alliance than the Russia-Turkey alliance. There's a lot of well, probably personal appreciation there, and appreciation of common goals in these circumstances, uh, both in Syria and mm, to some extent outside mm -hmm. Syria. Uh, so I think that this is, uh, these are our relations that are pretty important, and, uh, but they have different nature. Coming back to the energy-related uh, issues. Well, in this area, Russia really uh, is interested in uh, the Turkish Stream project, uh, mm -hmm. second part of it, uh, because it sees it as assuring Russia's independence or energy independence to some extent, or rather independence of, uh, uh, of, of revenues from, from selling its gas. Uh, also, it's a way of punishing Ukraine, of course. Mm -hmm. As for Russia's cooperation with Iran, with Iranian companies, well, it has been going that well. Actually, I don't think the Iranians are prepared to uh, give away uh, uh, a lot. And uh, let's remember, uh, Turkish uh, economy is much freer compared to the Iranian one. In Iran, you always have to deal with this or that level of oligarchy. Mm -hmm. And on the one hand, it's probably usual for for, for Russians. They're, they're, they're used to that. But uh, when you're talking about Bonya, these foundations are very frequently controlled by top fig figures mm -hmm. in the regime. Uh, well, they don't want to be taken for a ride in any business deals, and they probably prefer, um, you know, doing a lot of things without foreigners, or at least without Russian state companies, which um, they think could be overbearing. Yeah. I'd like to, to thank you so much. Thank and, you. And um, hope to see you in Bucharest again. Thank you very much. Thank you.